can open our Bibles and read from Matthew 26. We'll read the section in which Jesus institutes the first Lord's Supper. Read Matthew 26, and we'll start reading at verse 26 through 30. Matthew 26, and we'll start reading at verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. And then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine and from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. As far the reading from Scripture. Our text for the, this afternoon's brief message is what we read earlier in Matthew, Matthew 26. In particular, the focus will be on verse 29, which I'll read now. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This is the text for this afternoon. Brothers and sisters, in Matthew 26, we have one of the institutions of the Lord's Supper, at least the version of it that we have in Matthew. Jesus ate the Last Supper with his disciples, and he commanded them to eat a meal such as the Last Supper as a remembrance and as a memorial and as a sacrament of his death. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper, it's important to understand what Jesus was doing and what he said when the Lord's Supper was instituted. And so for each Lord's Supper celebration, we focused on different phrases that Jesus includes in that institution of the Lord's Supper. We had a sermon on the cup of forgiveness, another on the blood of the covenant. And today our focus is on these words on verse 29. I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And these are the last words Jesus leaves with his disciples before they leave the Last Supper and go to the Mount of Olives and towards Jesus' betrayal. And why would Jesus say these words? Why at this fateful moment of the Lord's Supper, why these words? What does this mean? What does this have to do with the Lord's Supper anyway? And Jesus is saying, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine until that day. I'm not going to drink wine with you disciples again until a certain day. Of course, we have to remember that Jesus is being leaving his disciples. He walked with them for years on earth, and now he's going to leave them. He's going to go to the cross. He's, he dies. And even after the cross, he raises, rises from the dead and then ascends into heaven. So what does he mean? I'm not going to drink wine until that day. What day? Well, some people might say there might be Jesus means, I'm not going to drink wine with you until after my resurrection. But it's not recorded that Jesus ate, or it's not recorded that Jesus drank wine with his disciples after the resurrection. He actually feeds his disciples, but again, he's not recorded as actually eating then either. It's a bit puzzling, Jesus' habits after the resurrection, but certainly... By this, Jesus does not mean after the resurrection. It's not mentioned again. 
So what day is it going to be on the day which he drinks with the disciples again? And his answer is, when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. What day is this? New with you in my Father's kingdom. Now some people would make another argument. They would say, this day is going to be the day in which we meet Jesus in heaven. Could this day be the day when we meet Jesus in heaven? Then we'll drink wine with him there. But again, there are reasons why this doesn't work either. In heaven, we will not have physical bodies. There's no evidence that there's going to be kind of earthly eating and drinking like we have here. We die, our souls go up to heaven to be with Jesus, but our bodies stay here. I don't, there's no real evidence in Scripture to say that when we meet Jesus, we're going to eat and drink with him there in heaven. It's not really said anywhere. So what is this day? Well, the day is the day of the, the new earth. We find evidence of this day in Revelation 19, verse 9. Then the angel said to me, write this. This is to the apostle John. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. The wedding supper of the Lamb is going to occur on the new earth. What does this mean? Well, let's review the end times for a second. The Bible teaches that the, this earth will come to an end. This age, the New Testament age, will end at some point. And on that day, when the things end, it'll be the day of judgment. Jesus will return from heaven onto earth, and he will judge all people, living or dead. And those who were already ascended into heaven to be with Jesus, their souls will come back and be reunited with their bodies, and they will become fully human again. And everyone will be judged in their human form. And those who believe in Jesus Christ will be declared righteous by Jesus Christ, and they will pass on to the new earth. Those who are guilty and do not believe in Jesus will be condemned to hell. And after the whole earth is judged, every human being is judged, the earth will be purified with fire, and then it will be restored to the state of paradise. And then all of us who believed in Jesus Christ, who God chose, will be placed on that new restored earth. And what will we do on that earth? We will eat and we will drink with Jesus and each other. There will be feasting on that new earth. The wedding supper of the Lamb, so to speak, will occur. Whatever it is, and it's not entirely clear what exactly that is. But there will be feasting and drinking such as we've never seen before. And there will never be sadness when the feasts end because we know that there will always be more. And so Jesus is saying in this past, in the institution of the Lord's Supper, I'm eating with you today, disciples, and I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to drink wine with you and eat today or eat with you until you are with me on the new earth and we're eating and drinking in paradise. And so Jesus is actually saying, Jesus says, I will not drink the wine again. But what he's really saying is, I will drink the wine and the fruit of the vine with you again on that day. So yes, disciples, I'm leaving you and that's very sad. But there's going to be a day in which we are reunited to eat and drink the Last Supper. Like the Last Supper. And so as we eat this table today, we ought to imagine it as a foretaste of the kind of dinner, the kind of meals we will eat on the new earth. Just as surely as we eat this bread and drink this wine, so surely will there be a day in which we will enjoy this thing, something like this except more glorious on the new earth. So imagine as you eat the meal that you're going to enjoy with Jesus in paradise. Taste this bread 
as if it grew on holy soil. Drink the wine as if it was produced by vineyards on a restored earth. And as you drink this meal or drink this wine and eat this bread, imagine you're sitting at the table with Jesus. Imagine he was sitting, seated at the head of the table, laughing with you, smiling. Imagine singing a hymn with him in the new heaven, singing together at the table as everyone enjoyed their food together. And imagine you're sitting at the table with people from this church and we all love each other perfectly. No one has any tears. No one has any weaknesses. We're all there perfectly together. Let me advance this one more before I finish. Don't just imagine eating this bread as you would on the new earth. Believe it. As surely as you drink this wine and, and eat this bread, so surely is that meal coming for you. And yes, remember the cost. The cost of Jesus Christ who had to die so that this meal could give you a foretaste of eternity. But that cost was shed out of love. And we ought to be produce joy in us. He died so that we could eat at this table and drink at this table and so that we could drink at the table in eternity. That is why he died. That was the joy that was set before him. That's why he did it. So believe that if he wants you to eat at this table, he wants you to eat at that table too. And so imagine it and believe it. Amen.